The Arch Crew today is on the Essex County side of the 1888 Pedestrian Suspension Bridge, also known as the Swing Bridge. And we're going to talk a little bit today about this bridge and the other bridges around it. Keysville is really special in that it has three National Register listed bridges, this one, and then downstream is an 1843 Stone Arch Bridge, and upstream is an 1878 uh, Iron Trust Bridge, and collectively they're also listed as a National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark. But to really appreciate and understand and love the swing bridge behind me, you've got to put yourself back in the early part of the 19th century when Keysville was a water-powered industrial village, when there was uh, homes on both sides of the river, where there were industries on either side of the river, and downtown and churches were here and the schools and churches and other neighborhoods were across the river and divided as it was by the Osable River it was really important to have crossings to connect the community together hence the three bridges that were built in the 19th century and this is actually the third pedestrian suspension bridge on this site the first one was built in the 1830s or early 1840s and it was made out of locally forged iron chain. And so instead of these cables that we see on this bridge, it was made out of chain. And in 1842 or three, when a parade of people crossed this pedestrian suspension bridge, the first one, it collapsed under all of the weight and several people were swept away in the river uh, and were drowned. But undeterred, the towns of uh, Sable and Chesterfield uh, re-erected another bridge, this time being made out of cable, and that one lasted until the middle of the 1880s when this one was built. And this one was built by the Berlin Iron Bridge Company in East Berlin, Connecticut, and it was one of a dozen or so that they built across the country. Imagine how important this br bridge was to the daily lives of people in Keysville, coming and going to visit each other, to go to downtown, to go to work, to go to church, etc. And even though the world has moved on and people are traveling almost exclusively by uh, cars, it's still an important pedestrian crossing. And if we were to sit here for an hour, we would see regular traffic crossing on the bridge. So it still plays that role today. And it's also an incredibly beautiful vantage point if you walk out on the bridge and look downstream at the falls here, what are called Anderson Falls, this was the drop in the river that provided the hydroelectric opportunity for water-powered manufacturing. And you can look downstream and see the Stone Arch Bridge and see a 1849 stone mill that was, was the home of the Osable Horsenail Company. And it's really a perfect place to really understand Keysville as an industrial community, but also to be able to see how beautiful uh, the Osable River is and what a tremendous asset it is uh, to the village. One of the things that Keysville is doing is uh, trying to revitalize its waterfront and uh, including a project Arch is involved in, in tearing down a, a collapsing building uh, and creating a new public park on the Clinton County side of the river. And when that happens, it, this bridge will be even more important in how it connects pedestrians that are visiting the parks on either side of the river or bicyclists that are bicycling through town these will become increasingly, I think, more and more of an attraction, which is why uh, people in Keysville and beyond are uh, fighting very hard to make sure these bridges are taken care of and continue to, uh, to be here for us uh, into the future. So now we're standing with Keysville's famous arch bridge in the background, and this is the bridge that probably most people know uh, Keysville for because it's oldest, it's right in the center of the village, and it's extremely photogenic. And this was built in 1842 to 1843, and this kind of stone masonry arch bridge is a kind of bridge technology that goes back uh, thousands of years, and it's really pretty simple. You, you build a wooden form in the shape of an arch over the river, and you do your masonry work on top of that, and when the masonry work is finished, you remove the form and the arch carries the load of the road uh, on top of it. And 
this is a time when bridge building was very much a local enterprise. This was built by a man named Solomon Townsend and a crew of local masons. He took most of the stone that was used for the bridge right from the, uh, the river banks. This is a kind of Potsdam sandstone that's found all through this part of the valley. And to the trim on the arch there, the gray stone was a, is a kind of limestone that was quarried in Willsboro. So local men, local contractor, local materials, and even the mortar that was used to hold the stones together would have been made from limestone that was burned and crushed and pulverized and, and made into mortar. So very much a product of its place. But uh, it was not, it didn't go without incident. When there was, the bridge was under construction in 1842, but not quite completed, a very heavy rainstorm occurred and the level of the river rose up and a sort of wall of water swept down the river and washed away the formwork under the bridge and the stonework on top of it collapsed. And it was said that you could hear the sound of that stonework collapsing all the way to Port Kent, about four miles away. But what was Solomon Townsend and his crew to do? They waited for the water to go down, they rebuilt the formwork, and they started to reassemble the bridge and uh, finished it in the following year in 1843, and this bridge has been serving uh, Keysville uh, ever since. I think it's interesting to note that in the famous flood of 1856, which washed away every or almost every bridge and dam on the east branch and the main branch of the Osable River, this is the only bridge that survives, uh, again, because of how it's constructed and the height it is above the water. And that flood of 1856 is marked by a stone that's embedded in the one side of the bridge, as is a much larger, higher flood in 1998. And the flooding from Hurricane Irene atop both of those. So this bridge has really seen some punishment over time. And uh, this, is, this, is a, this is a great vantage point to see the other ways in which local sandstone was used in the building of the Osable Horsenail Company factory there, the old Congregational Church, the office building for the Horsenail Company, uh, the Grange Hall, and foundations and chimneys uh, everywhere that we, we, we look here. So we're now on the Upper Bridge, or sometimes it's called the River Street Bridge. And this was built in 1878 to provide yet another crossing uh, to connect Clinton and Essex counties and to connect uh, the towns of Osable and Chesterfield, and to bring together the two halves of Keysville. This is actually the second bridge built on the site. The first one was a long covered bridge that collapsed under a huge uh, snow load. And after that disaster happened, uh, this bridge was, was built. This was built by a company from Pennsylvania called Murray Dougal and Company. And it is made out of cast iron and wrought iron. So this was built at a time before steel was in widespread use as a bridge building material. And it's one of the things that makes this bridge really unusual because there are currently only about 75 wrought and cast iron bridges in the entire United States. So it's a fairly rare work of American civil engineering. And the kind of bridge this is, generally speaking, this is a truss bridge. But more specifically, this is what's called a Pratt through truss. Pratt has to do with the brothers who patented this particular combination of verticals and diagonals and a through truss because there is a, a kind of a roof to it that joins the two trusses on each side of the bridge uh, together. You actually pass through what's essentially a long uh, box. And this is also a good bridge uh, to talk about why the preservation of historic bridges is difficult. And let's begin by going back in our minds to 1878 when this was bridge, when this was built, when Keysville was a pedestrian village, when most of the traffic going through the village was uh, horse-drawn conveyances. And so the weight loads using a bridge like this would have been relatively uh, small. And uh, when the automobile comes along and trucks come along and trucks get bigger and school buses come along, suddenly 
the demands on this bridge are much greater than what the bridge was designed for. So it, when one wants to keep a bridge like this in service, one has to find a way either to limit the loads that cross it or to raise up the load carrying capacity of the bridge by inserting stronger members in, in some way in the truss or underlying uh, configuration. And that requires some imaginative engineering work, but it also starts from a place where the civil engineering community or the highway department communities in the counties and the towns has to wanna really preserve this important part of its uh, engineering heritage. That's a starting place for finding a way to do the kind of thing that I've just talked about. As you can see from the sign behind me, this bridge is closed to traffic. And it's been closed to traffic for about 20 years. And that happened after a bridge inspection crew uh, came by like they do with all of the state's bridges, did an assessment of the condition of the bridge and decided that there was something that was worrisome about it. And so it got flagged and eventually it got closed. And it's been sitting here ever since uh, kind of in limbo. There have been discussions between Clinton and Essex counties about whether to repair it or not and what the cost would be. There's been an engineering study, at least a preliminary study, that uh, outlined what the problems were with the bridge and what it might cost to fix it. But a lot more engineering work needs to be done to really make some final decisions about what to do here. And the really good news these days is that there is a a very lively group in Keysville that has come together around the preservation of the village's uh, bridges, not just the three uh, in Keysville, but a, a very cool historic bridge downstream in Osable Chasm too. And if you want to find out what they're doing, go to Save Keysville's Bridges on uh, Facebook and, and sign the petition. I think there's 1,400 signatures so far uh, uh, supporting their efforts. What it will take to restore and rehabilitate and reopen this bridge is as simple as two or three main ingredients. There has to be a lot of public interest and support. Uh, the county governments are not going to do this on their own. Uh, they're going to do it because the communities that they represent uh, believe that this is important to the community fabric and to community transportation infrastructure. And so you've got to have a public supporting, uh, speaking out about this and speaking up to their counties and elected officials. And the other thing it will take is money. And um, I believe that money could be had, could be found to rehabilitate this bridge, both because it's a very rare work of American civil engineering, but also because it's an important part of the transportation infrastructure uh, in this village. And it's part of what will, going forward, attract people to come to this, uh, to this village. I, it's nice to see that when you enter the village of Keysville these days, you see these big signs that say, welcome to Keysville, home of three historic bridges, right up there front and center, how the community identifies itself, what the community is proud of, and where the community is putting its future.